Sean Sula here with the Engagement.com podcast. Very excited to have two very enthusiastic professionals, Chris and Eric uh, Martinez, on the show. They have a podcast of their own that's worth checking out if you're a fitness professional especially. Um, that is called the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. They have books on Amazon. They have a new book that came out two weeks ago. We're going to talk about that. They're just a bundle of energy and positivity, and I'm very excited to have you on the show, guys. So welcome. Thanks for being here. Sean, thank you so much and really appreciate the kind words. And yeah, I mean, I would have to say I, I, have to, I always one-up Chris on the energy side. <laughs> yeah, right. Nice. We're going to be electric tonight then. <laughs> we'll have a lot of fun though. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, I dig it. So uh, uh, they're in California right now and um, obviously there's a lot, of, a lot of heat going on, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, and I'm in Colorado and before we push record, we we're talking about the, the fires going on and how, how, you know, it's kind of bittersweet and sad because the outdoors are so important for a lot of us, especially us listeners and viewers for the engagement show. Mm -hmm. uh, and in California, it's just crazy. And then Oregon, um, we have five fires in Colorado and it's been raining ash about six weeks now, five or six weeks. Are you guys experiencing something like this out there or worse? I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Same thing. I mean, like we're, we're raining ashes too. And I know like the fires were worse over where Eric's at Northern California, you know, but it's just crazy how it's all just came over here to Southern California and LA, you know, and it's like, you just got literally have to wear your mask like everywhere now, you know? Wow. Double yeah. And it's what, what's, what's interesting too, is like, we had like an all time record of a, a heat wave over here in California over the weekend, Labor Day weekend. And then it's like, we're all indoors because it's so hot. And then all of a sudden all these fires happen. It's like, we haven't even, I haven't even uh, been able to leave because of like the, the air quality. I mean, it's really bad. It's like the whole sky's orangey and it's just, whew, you know, so it's, I don't know. It's interesting times right now, Sean. So, you know, uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, every day I, I really just wake up with a positive and abundant mindset and really just control what I can and don't stress what I can't, you know, then that's what I tell a lot of our fitness professional students do. Oh, I love that. And I'm glad we brought that up. One of my questions was going to be, what do you do in your toolkit to stay positive? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm always going to go with my go-to uh, morning routine. You know, that's literally the way you program your mind to play offense, not defense. You know, most people wake up and they're always in reactive mode. So by, you know, having a, a dedicated morning routine, whether it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, I mean, literally it really helps you set the tone and just be in a positive state. So for me, I wake up, uh, I like to hydrate. I wake up between six and seven, uh, hydrate first and foremost, get my coffee to wake up. Um, also do some reading, whether it's just like some some sort of like leadership, marketing, whatever literally I need to read and consume, I'll be reading that for like 30 to 45 minutes. I'll do a light journal and then a light meditation, then go stretch, have my shake and then go for a walk. And then I'm ready to go to start working. Oh, I love it. It's a great point you brought up. And um, one of our, our, I'm sure mentors to you as well, Brett Jones was on the show about a month and a half ago, and he had such good nuggets and he had just beaten stage three cancer. We're going to go into some heavier stuff later, I'm sure. Wow. But, um, you know, accepting what you can't control and controlling what you can, right? That's, that's great. Like, you know, making the bed, tying your shoes, going on the walk, doing the journal, making the coffee. You can control those things, right? Right. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. That's a very common theme I, I, I recognize in a lot of professionals that um, practice what they preach. So that's cool. Definitely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, basically it's like every day you have a choice, you know, to be in a, a negative mood or a positive mood, you know, and it's just like, it's a perception of just like your, your reality. And, you know, if you want to sit there and choose to be in a negative mood then you know, that's not going to sit there and help you win the day, you know? So you might as well try to reframe your mindset to be positive and try to sit there and play offense and win the, win the day, you know, not every day is going to be sunshine and roses, but you know, you're better off going that route of trying to be positive. Yeah, absolutely. Here's something, um, Tim Ferriss brought up, and I've been trying to do as well. There's not always always easy days or easy moments, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes when I've, I've done my gratuity journal and I've done what I think I can do to boost my my mojo, I'll reach out to somebody and just shoot them a text, just something nice, do something mm -hmm. nice for somebody else. And then in turn, I don't know if it's because it feels good and selfish or, or energy is working in your favor now, but it feels better, right? Then you start in that, that pattern, like you said, gratuity, right? Back yeah, to right. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I love that personally, uh, now that you mentioned that, Sean, because we actually did that two weeks ago, Chris and I, and it's just, we, we just, what we call them gratitude texts to like, you know, either our peers, our mentors, our friends, anyone that we're just really appreciative, like people we've had on the podcast and say, like, we'll go literally through our Rolodex of like our phone and just do like an audio message or, or a text. And it's just literally that just like, just, Hey, hopefully, hopefully everything is well. We're super grateful for you. And hopefully you're healthy, safe, wishing you nothing but success. And people are, are so surprised by it and it's just, it's insane, you know, <laughs> but it, it's such a small little gesture that goes such a long way. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's just the people too. They don't really expect it, you know, like right. in day and age and like, you know, they, they always kind of think like you want something or, you know, like what's in it for me type of thing. So when yeah. you just kind of hit them up with like, Hey, how you doing? Like, how you doing personally? Just checking in. They're kind of like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. That's not normal. But man, it, for, for the listeners, that is such a huge hack to build your network because people honestly will remember that if you send them like a gratitude text like that. That's, that is great advice. <laughs> and that goes for any relationship, whether it's business or um, a family or of love. Yeah. Just random acts of kindness, right? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I dig it. Oh, you guys are onto it. This is me spitfire. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> um, well, a little more about you guys, if you could, uh, what was your, um, how did you start into the fitness industry? Yeah. So if I, if I take the listeners back, um, through, it was 18 years ago. So we were seniors in high school and it was actually three days before Christmas. So before this happened, I mean, we grew up in a really picture perfect family. Uh, my father was a uh, correctional officer, prison guard at San Quentin State Prison. So he was really tough on us, always instilled, uh, you know, work ethic, discipline, education. So he was a very good role model. And thinking back now, he was very tough on us, but I do respect and appreciate all that. But um, yeah, he was taken from us um, at the age of 18, you know, um, and it was three days before Christmas. He fell asleep behind the wheel. Um, we got a knock on the door at three in the morning. And I remember it was a California highway patrol officer and a chaplain. So oh, yeah. not, not a good combo at that hour. And I remember just, you know, seeing my mom just on her knees, just screaming bloody murder. And I thought I was a, in a nightmare and uh, I never woke up from it. So the reality of it was he passed away. And then three months later, my mom's mom passed away due to cancer. So it was like a ton of bricks, like hit our family and our family just like crumbled, you know, within that time. So we were all very lost. We were just dealing with adversity, grief that we didn't know how to it was unexpectedly. Chris and I went down a dark path, just, you know, we were lost kids. We were very angry. Um, so yeah, you know, what really saved us was, you know, six years later and just, um, you know, going through the motions and just going through uh, to the gym, hitting the iron, that's what alleviated a lot of stress. But Six years later, we uh, actually stumbled across a, a muscular development magazine. It was with it was a column by Dr. Lane Norton, and for some reason, like it really just like captivated our attention, and we were just like, "Wow, this guy's awesome! He's you know a natural bodybuilder. He has a PhD in nutritional sciences. For some reason, we need to reach out to this guy." So I remember Chris reached out to him and asked him for coaching, and we took his we took him up on and he took he took us in for coaching, and after that, we just did a mentorship under him and just learned under him for five years, just learned all his tools, his programming, how he ran his online business. So this was very early on when online business, excuse me, online fitness kind of went into the fitness industry industry. So then, yeah, after that, we, we just started seeking out different mentors, just really, you know, other pioneers to learn different skill sets within fitness. And then we started our business, the, our first business, uh, dynamic duo training, where it was all customized training, nutrition, programming, work with thousands of clients. We were able to scale that business to the multiple six figures. And then, Three years later, we pivoted to just completely just B2B coaching for fitness professionals and just helping them create more income, impact, influence, and independence. So here we are now. Wow. That is a moving story. And one, Chris and Eric, I, I, I applaud you for being open and talking about this. And Thank you. And also, um, I'm sorry for your loss. I, Thank this you. This is a topic I think you and I can relate on a lot. Um, and the listeners probably know. So I bring it up fairly often because I want people to be open to talking about loss and grief and the, the ups and downs that come along with it, like the, the waves of the ocean crashing against the, the shore and, and all the other analogies. Right. Um, like you guys, I am, um, I, my brother passed away of a heart attack at 21. And so, oh, I don't, wow. yeah. And so my whole family was morbidly obese. And so I always tried to lead by example, by being healthier and fit and stuff like that, but never really thought about applying it to other people. And then when he passed, I was like, all right, extra motivation to go out and serve. And then, my sister, brain cancer, took care of her. I'm like, okay, I've got to scale this up and help more people. She passed. And my, my mother and my father. So I definitely understand the pain point of why you work so hard and put so much kindness out there in serving others. So hats off to you guys. 
Yeah. And, and thanks for sharing that, Sean. Really appreciate that. And, you know, sorry for all your losses, but um, yeah, you definitely know then, then what we've been through and yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's always a battle. And it's always going to be with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you heard the term integrated grief? I've heard, you know, complicated <laughs> grief and all this, but integrated is a new term. I was working with a bereavement mm -hmm. counselor last year and it's learning to acknowledge, like, again, accept that it's there, right? You can't change it, but accepting it's there and using it almost like a superpower, like you guys have done and just as fuel, as energy to, to drive you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's awesome. Okay. I've never heard of like integrated grief like that, but just like you went to a counselor too, you know, I mean, for some of the listeners right now, I mean, like it's nothing to be ashamed of, you know, like we literally hired a, a personal growth mentor. We were talking about earlier, we went to Boulder and that was one of the reasons why to spend three days with him, you know, and then we did a trip to Mexico where it's like, it was tied in with like an orphanage where you give back, but at the same time you're working on letting go of things in the past. So that was something Eric and I wanted to let go of was, you know, just all of the pain, the anger of losing our father, you know, and it was like a beautiful moment you know and sometimes you have to really dig deep like that and do the deep work you know yeah that's so good yeah the deep work and it's not easy work and i know a lot of people no. here towards comfort <laughs> why weren't there <laughs> comfort is comfortable but yeah sometimes you got to do the hard work absolutely wow well this is that that's a really great way to start it off um and it's amazing what you've done with your guys itself you've processed this and turned it into uh, such a big and impactful business um and the most recent episode of your podcast, I was enjoying just about an hour ago, and it really made me light up because I'm, I think I'm kind of guilty of this part of, uh, of, of my business. I do Zoom one-on-ones or Zoom groups and stuff like that, and um, you had a strong opinion about that. Can you talk a little bit about your opinion on Zoom and one-on-one -on -one training? Take yeah, that yeah. away, Chris. I'll, I'll take that away. Um, <laughs> so, so basically – it's nothing that I have like personally against it or anything like that. It's just, um, for me, what I, my goal, like for my fitness professionals is to create more income impact influence and independence for them. That's just the main goal with them. And for them to be able to uh, go into a zoom coaching model, they're almost doing the same exact model of being a personal trainer in person right? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want. But if you're the type of trainer that wants to scale and you guys want more time, you know, then you have to sit there and find a scalable, profitable business model. So you could do the in-person training where it's one-to-one, -one, but then it's like, that's why we preach the hybrid training model of adding online because you have two revenue streams. And if you're doing the online training, you can't go into that same model where it's like you're doing one-to-one -one Zoom training sessions like that because you're getting back into that hamster wheel of trading time for dollars and it's a broken business model. It's not scalable. So yeah. For us, you know, we, we really want to stand by that, you know, because that's not true online coaching, in my opinion, you know, like they can have that in their package somehow if they stack it properly. Maybe that's a higher tier package because it's one on one time with you, you know, literally one on one time. But, you know, it's not true online coaching. We did true online coaching literally for seven to eight years, you know, and that's a more scalable model to where it's like it's you're, you're, they're buying accountability every single week for a check in. They do the structured training and nutrition program on their own. It's all individualized. They have access to, um, you know, ask you questions throughout the week. And this way you're spending 15, 20 minutes per like client update. And that's where it's a scalable model where you can coach 40, 50 uh, clients, you know, at a really good rate. That's awesome. Oh, I hope we do, uh, drill down more on this because this is going to help a lot of people and especially the last six months. I mean, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I literally had three gyms close on one day. And yeah, I was like, my backup, my backup plan all in one day. And so it makes you curious. And uh, Horrible. <laughs> it was very frustrating, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, I uh, hope for gym owners, man. For sure. And, you know, that day I went home and I had a little pity party, of course. And then I was like, woke up, I'm like, all right, if I'm feeling this, other people are feeling this too. People oh, I'm yeah. serving and other business owners, like, we got to rally. We got to figure out how to serve some people real quick, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you guys were already doing it though. So you were ahead of the curve. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, I, I don't, I don't bash people like to do it because like nobody knew this pandemic was coming and it's like, everybody has to pivot right somehow. So whoever was like a personal trainer in person, and that was their kind of like frantic pivot to sit there and do like zoom one-to-one -one coaching. Cause they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. I mean, I commend them for that, but it's like, now that we're kind of like deep into this five, six months in, you can't sustain that model. Like going forward, it's like kind of like you have to open up your eyes and, and, and figure out what is the profitable business model going forward for me and my business, my family, all that type of stuff, serving people at the highest level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just really quick to add to that, it's just because too, you got to, you got to look at the bigger picture with your business. And just, if you're playing the long game, which you should be, you know, in any type of business, um, if you're really like sitting there selling sessions, like a package of sessions, and you have to show up every single day for this person via zoom on a computer or a phone, it's just, it, again, it goes back to that broken model where it's like, if they miss a session, then they're like, Oh, well coach, like you still owe me like this amount of sessions to where it's like, 
it's a mess. It becomes a mess. It becomes a headache that the trainer becomes discouraged. He's not going to show up hundred percent. So it's just for us, we're, we've seen it and we've heard it already from several trainers to where they're just like, Oh, I see why you guys are talking about this. So it's just, it's not a good model. I, I take that. Thank you for breaking it down too. And, um, you know, I think a certain part of me really enjoys the one-on-one. I still do one-on-one or small. Definitely. Yeah. And it's, I, I get a lot out of it and I really enjoy it. But, um, the zooms are fun, fun too. I like to see people and their, their spouse and their dogs doing it too. That's great. But my God, how great would it be to not have to have that structure and take a three day weekend and go see some, <laughs> my in-laws or something. Right. And know that I could provide a service to help the people, but I don't have to be in front of them. I could take a text or an email response. I'm sure. But don't have to set the cameras up and the microphones and all the lighting and all the things, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's where the, the true time freedom and remote comes into play because yeah, you, you, you have to think about those things, especially if you have a family. I mean, you want to be able to go take trips and not worry about showing up to like an hour, just training session via zoom. I mean, the in-person model, beautiful. That's, that's why we preach the hybrid of both in-person and online that, you know, you, nothing will ever replace the in-person coaching, mm-hmm. but it's like, why not have two components if you can do that? Of course. Yeah. I think it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And I'm all about, all about different income streams too. That's why I have oh, yeah. five businesses, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. I have a, a book on the shelf back there. It's the number one book in the world on split boarding. It's also the only book on the world on split boarding. So, <laughs> 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 so yeah, it's fun to create services uh, that help people, especially if, if you don't have to actually be in front of them and they still win. Like that's yep. great. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you guys have figured this out. This is so fun. Um, all right, let's talk about failures. So I I fail <laughs> almost every day. <laughs> <I try to>. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> right, cool. So thank you for being honest about that. Um, we learn from our mistakes, and I, I yeah. usually make them twice. Uh, what are some things? Well, I guess what have you learned? You learned a lot along the way, but like, what do you have you learned from some of your bigger mistakes? It's, you talking about maybe business wise, or just maybe life like? Any actually any, but probably business right now. Yeah. So business wise, I mean, I'd say the biggest mistake like Sean is I should have hired a mentor um, years ago, you know, years ago. I'm, I'm huge on mentorship. I really am because you're buying speed um, of like building your business um, and, and you're buying actually like accountability as well too, because when you have a mentor, you don't want to let that mentor down. That's a good point. Right? Like you, you, and then obviously you're paying for this mentorship, right? I'm a huge advocate of like people that pay, pay attention. If you pay more, you pay more attention. So you're buying you're buying speed, you're buying accountability and you're buying just really not making the same mistakes because the mentor went through that type of stuff, you know? So for me, it was just, you know, being stubborn, trying to like wear all the hats, trying to do all the things, the mindset of just like, no, nobody can do this X, Y, Z better than me, you know? And it wasn't until literally we joined, you know, Ty Lopez's, you know, $25,000 mastermind. And honestly, like Sean, like we were shitting bricks, man. Like when like, (laughs) When it came to that point where like we, we were getting like sold to them and they were like, Hey, how are you guys going to pay for this? We're just like sweating buckets. We're like calling like different family members. We're on the, on the phone with like different credit card companies to like increase the limit. And finally we got it done, but it was the best decision ever, man. It really was because that full year that we were in that mastermind, I mean, just meeting up with um, them at his mansion in Beverly Hills four times, being around those people that are just millionaires, billionaires, whatever. I mean, it's just like, it was an irreplaceable experience to where it literally set our mindset to never, ever like go back down that road of like trying to do everything ourselves and to keep propelling forward and then keep hiring mentors, coaches, investing in courses, stuff like that. Yeah. I really like that. That's great. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I, I guess for me, I'll, I'll go a different direction. I think it was just really, understanding the importance of developing EQ um, versus IQ. Um, I mean, yeah. you think about this, if we, if we go back into like how we were programmed just to be taught through like a broken school system. I mean, our parents did the best that they could, you know, they didn't know any better um, depending on what background they came from and upbringing. But I, I think I've realized just over the last 10 years of just being in this game of being of an entrepreneur and just even in life that how important it is to develop emotional resiliency and just be, you know, relentless about everything in life and just keep attacking, be patiently aggressive and the understanding that you're going to get knocked down. You're going to fail. You know, there's going to be people that do you wrong and it's just all part of life. Right. And it's just like, how much can you really just, how many punches can you take? How how much adversity can you overcome? And that's all going to come with, you know, EQ mindset being just mentally, emotionally and spiritually stronger. So I think that that's what has really been, the biggest like game changer epiphany for me. And that's something I just teach heavily to my entrepreneur students and fit pros just because I know that 80% of the game is mindset. 
<laughs> oh, I love I, that. I, I wish more people talked about EQ, emotional intelligence. Yeah. I mean, I have friends that are rocket scientists and they're book smart, but you, hey, <laughs> can't read a conversation, <laughs> you know, <laughs> put stuff in space, but they can't do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. yeah. It's so important. It is. Man, big big brother by one minute up to me on that one. <laughs> no, yours was good too. Yours was really <laughs> mentors. Yeah. And I'm all about that too. I mean, my wife usually gets mad at me this because I sign for every course that comes through the area. Strong first, IKFF, FMS, <laughs> TRX. I have more initials. Nobody cares about that, but I care about that, you know, um, because you can always learn more and you can put, yeah. you can take out some of it and put in your toolkit. And then that, that, that thing happens like, oh, I have the right tool for this. And you apply it. Um, yeah. Always learning. So I love it. You're, you're a lifelong student. Exactly. Always. Yeah. And so are you guys. That's great. This is, oh, this is really, yeah. uh, this, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, fun. You, have, you have to be because it's like, you, you got to watch out for those people that, you know, that say they know it all and like, they don't need to learn more and stuff like that because I mean, no. it's a it's a lifelong game, man, of just learning, being a student, testing things, you know, um, you know, investing in yourself. I mean, it is a lifelong game. It really, really is. It is. Yeah. And I'm glad to hear from you guys too. And that, and that advice goes to you, everybody out there, like, please invest in yourself. Like, oh yeah. That's the best investment. Exactly. Not, <laughs> not a new car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, good stuff. Good stuff. That was funny. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I got a lot of bad jokes. Um, well, great. So, uh, when did you start your podcast? 248 episodes deep. That's, that's a lot. I would say, what is it? What was it about like four, four or five years ago? 2017. Like, uh, I think July, 2017. I want, yeah, I want to say it was more close yeah, about four years. It has to be about close to four years now. Yeah. And what, was, what, what is it? One episode per week. And then well, I'm bad at math. What does that come out to? 52 a year. Yeah. So 52. So yeah, about like it's got to be like a, at least a little over like four years. Yeah. But then we did a series though too, Sean, like oh, right yeah, 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 you're right. where it's like, it was a pro tip series, like literally 15, 20 minutes. And we put those out like literally daily and we did like yeah. three. Of them. So that's where it kind of like started adding up too, you know? Yeah. That was, yeah. that was too much work though, man. <laughs> oh, I bet. No, I, it's always funny um, and interesting when people start a business or a, a podcast. Um, you guys know Pat Flynn, right? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah, yeah. Pat, Pat's awesome. We're actually Pat and Alex and I are in a very heated debate about chicken wings right now. On <laughs> it's pretty fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we're goofballs for sure. Yeah. But um, I think for him, he started his podcast just to just to ask questions and feel it out, you know, and like not intending to do it. But now he's got Dan John every Wednesday, and yeah, Dan John's a great guy to talk with, of course, and just a great leader. Um, and my podcast was an on accident too. Uh, like we were talking about before the, the record button. Um, as in Gearmint, every every summer, um, outdoor retailer would come here to Denver, and I would interview about a hundred companies, the Patagonia, the North Face, this and that. And I I do it with the cameras and audio equipment. And I was like, I love audiobooks and podcasts. Why wouldn't I just tr transfer this over to a podcast so people yeah. can do it on the way to work? And uh, then it spun out of control. And then I, all these great resources like people like you that are fitness professionals. Um, are jumping on and it's great because it's helping out people now like an entrepreneurial and like in a spiritual and in a self-improvement way. So it's, it's fun, fun having podcast. Oh, it's, 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 it's really a blast. Is. Like, honestly, like we, we knew going into it. Um, we, we did our research and we, we waited for a while, um, before we actually pulled the trigger. But, um, it, it just like, I tell anybody, you know, it's just, if you're looking to start anything, whether it's a podcast, like YouTube channel, a business, I mean, you have to really buy into the, the mindset of just every master was once a disaster, right? So you're going to, you're going to, going to suck at first like whatever you put out is going to suck but again through repetition through building up skills you're going to get better so sets and reps but um yeah yeah it's it's just fun to look back like when we started and how it's evolved and the the awesome guests that we've had on just the persistence just all the wisdom that we you know acquired just during those interviews i mean mm -hmm. it's fun like i it's something i see myself doing just for a long long time and you build a hell of a network wouldn't you agree do oh my god yeah if, if, if I were to mention any one of the guests I've had in the last six months, I would have had to pay thousands of dollars to hire their services. Mm -hmm. now, yeah, now it's like, what are you doing tomorrow? Want you on a podcast? Sure. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you do it. And it's so fun because you get to see them as a, as a human being, not just yeah. the person you put on the pedestal, right? Yeah. And you become friends. And then you're talking about chicken wings online. And it just, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's just it's just cool just just like being able to just conversate with people. I think sometimes like we go in this we go in as interviewers and we're thinking like 
if especially if it's a bigger name person, you, you get a little bit pressured. There's some anxiety. You're like, ah, oh, man, like I don't want to mess this up. And it's just like, it's got to be perfect. But uh, I remember John Lee Dumas told us this, that, that there's no such thing as a perfect interview. And once I heard him say that, I was like, ah, oh, I was like, thank you. Like that took <laughs> off a lot of pressure. I'm like, just go into it, lose, have fun, just be yourself, conversate because that's what people want to hear. I mean, I, I'm a huge Joe Rogan show fan. So I just love how they're just like talking about random stuff. Just like, to me, I like that style. Yeah, I do that. I do that a lot. Yeah. It's true. Like, you know, I, I, I'll go back and listen to a podcast. When they're too informative, I, I don't want that. But that's like an audio book. And I'll go get the audio book for that and yeah. learn, learn that way. But I like to hear people's real personalities. And, and you're absolutely right. About, about a minute or two ago, you said, just do it. Like, do it yesterday. It's going to suck. You'll get mm -hmm. better. Put in the reps. Everybody yeah. starts somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. And one of, one of my favorite sayings was from like Ty Lopez. He said, be impatiently patient as opposed to patiently impatient, right? And that just basically means that you need to be a little bit impatient by starting now. Don't be perfect. Just get it started, but then be patient. You know, like let it, let it kind of like work in, work out the kinks and all that stuff and play the long game. Because too many people, they'll sit there and be super patient, be like, oh, it's not the right timing. I'm going to wait one year, two years. But then once they start it, then they get super impatient. And then they just kind of throw in the towel or they start just doing dumb stuff. You know what I mean? So I really like that saying. That's good. That's very impactful. Yeah. I, I, I think it's probably human nature for most people to overthink and want to be perfect. And I can't tell you how many times I, I give this advice that you guys are giving the listeners right now too. We have like 30 or 32 writers on our engagement team and they're of all walks of life and diversity and older mm -hmm. and younger. And, um, and they're always like, how do you write or how do you create? I'm like, you just do it. You, you, uh, like Pat said, write fast, edit slow. You know, like just, mm -hmm. just get it done, right? I like that. Yeah, like he's, he's got a lot of good nuggets. For really sure. powerful. <laughs> yeah. Write fast, edit slow. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah just good. like, <laughs> yeah, just talking about like what you were saying, Sean. It's just like, it's because like all these false belief patterns that were just like kind of like, you know, ingrained in, you know, growing up, you know, to where it's just like, man, the imposter syndrome, the, the fear of getting started, the fear of failure, you know, the scarcity around money mindset, the comparison issues, right? Mm -hmm. And this is something we hammer home with our students. Like instead of like always focusing on your A plus work, which is never going to be A plus work, you know what I mean? Start with your B plus work so you can actually go out there and serve, you know, start testing a little bit, get some biofeedback back, you know, and then get better. That's good advice. Yeah. Yep. This is really good. Wow. You guys know your stuff. <laughs> this is good. It's really <laughs> good. Yeah. You earned it too. It didn't just like, we, yeah, we try, we try. Yeah. No, you do. <laughs> oh, this is great. Um, so your most recent book, uh, is this the new era of fitness? It's the rise of the fit pros one. Rise of the fit pros. Nice. Yeah. All right. And where is that available? So that one's on Amazon. Um, I mean, and then we also just have like a, a link to where you can actually find it there, rise of the fit pros.com. So, I mean, you can get it pretty much like anywhere that you want, you know? Sweet, sweet. Yeah. Well, we're, not, we're not on that level yet where you can walk into Barnes and Nobles yet though. <laughs> Nobody is. You know, Pavel, I think you can go buy Pavel's book. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> we could just go place the book in there. Yeah. You yep. can do that. I can go buy it and like, oh yeah. yeah. Go, just take a picture of it. <laughs> say, we, say we made it. <laughs> yeah. That's an angle. I like it. <laughs> People stage houses. You can stage your book. That's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I dig it. So um, of fitness background, is there a certain uh, modality or a certain style that you guys prefer for yourself and for training others? Oh, I'll, I'll get into like kind of like ours. I mean, it's funny because like we got into weightlifting and we did a bodybuilding show back in 2013, which I'll, I probably would never do that again. I mean, it was a good journey, good journey, good test, but uh, I'm good. Yeah. So um, we, we, we started off with like a lot of just, um, are you familiar with like, um, like West side barbell training? Like, sure. Simmons? yeah. So just a lot of like powerlifting stuff, like one rep maxes. Um, and honestly, we were young, you know I mean? I mean, we're still young, but you know, we, our body took the beating back then to where I think we just overdid it, you know, to where we didn't work on mobility. We didn't really do like the foam rolling, just stretching to where it caught up to us. And we had a lot of injuries. And then after the bodybuilding show, I mean, that was just like icing on the cake, but, um, yeah, now, now we just kind of keep it simple. It's like usually like a full body type of approach or upper lower split, um, you know, still doing some compound movements. And for me, I, I don't know. I just, I'm not really into like the, the heavy, like powerlifting style anymore. To me, I just, I, I don't want to get injured. So to me, it's just more about just like maintaining, you know, just gaining a little more strength. Uh, that's really it. Yeah. Keep it simple. I like yeah, for, for me, Sean, I, I've gotten into boxing. Have you ever boxed? <laughs> 
I don't, I don't camera view it as a boxing bag right there. We have. Not. Oh, nice. Nice. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no, I, have man, I mean, for your listeners, if you guys haven't taken like private lessons with boxing, I highly recommend it. I mean, you guys will see the carryover too, like within business and life and all that stuff, but man, it's a hell of a workout. So I've gotten into that, you know, like really doing that two, three times a week and then trying to do th three, four times a week, full body. I mean, it's hard kind of doing both of them because the punching takes a, a toll on your shoulders and then, you know, you're more susceptible to get like an injury when you're doing like overhead presses and stuff. But man, sure. boxing has just been so awesome. It really has. That's yeah. I can still take you in a round. Uh, I don't know, man. I'll, I'll uppercut you. <laughs> Brother talk. I like it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, I've done kickboxing, and uh, I, oh, I nice. enjoyed that. So that was a lot of fun. But, yeah. you know, I think most people I know have gone through either boxing or martial arts of some sort, some discipline, basically, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it carries over in life in a good way. Yeah. Definitely. Really does. You know, it really does. And like, uh, what's taught me is like, just like what Eric was talking about earlier is just EQ, like managing your emotions, you know, because like, if you're, if you're getting like in boxing and somebody hits you, right, you guys are sparring, your instinct is to react and just be mm -hmm. pissed off and want to go after the person. Right. But it's like, you got to calm down a little bit and like assess what just happened. Like, mm -hmm. do you need a duck? Do you need a block again? Like, do you got to come back with a straight or, or a hook? Whatever it is. Right. Same thing in life and business, man. Like you're going to get knocked down. Something's going to happen. It's like, you got to control your emotions. Emotions. You got to really sit there and reassess everything that's going on and think rationally before making a decision. Oh, I love it. You know, there's a lot of ways we approach this, and I'm trying to give credit to who who said this. I think it was my friend, uh, Eric Frohart, retired Navy SEAL, something to the effect of humans are the only animals that move around faster when they're confused. Like, if you think about that for a second, like, t like you said, take a second, assess the situation, observe, you know, figure it out, don't react. It's going to cause more repercussions. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very true. I watch it. I, I do a lot of outdoor adventure stuff, and I, I enjoy being a, like a, a guide, not a guide guide, but I like guiding people on adventures. And uh, when things go kind of south sometimes, I watch people kind of freak out a little bit. And you see this in any kind of walk of life or any kind of modality. And uh, if you can just get them to do some diaphragmatic breaths, yes. think about it, reassess, good things mm -hmm. can happen. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. 100%. Well, I dig it, guys. This is this is very helpful. Um, yeah, and I'm like you. I'm not trained to uh, impress anybody or do anything crazy compound. Uh, I just enjoy movement and moving well, <laughs> moving often. Because <laughs> I'm older. I'm, I'll be 42 in a few months, and I don't – I've ripped out my funny bone. I've tore my Oof. abdominal Oof. wall. But, yeah, I've, I've got enough injuries I don't want anymore unless I've – during a campaign or something. So, yeah, I'm with you on that, guys, for sure. <laughs> Do you guys have like uh, fitness stuff at home or do you go someplace? Yeah. So right now I'm actually working out of, um, a, of, of my garage here, just, um, where my mom lives. So it's actually, uh, serving me well. And, you know, I have like, just like the basic stuff, like some barbells, some dumbbells. So yeah, I'm, I'm making do with what I have. And, uh, obviously what, what's unfortunate too, is the gyms are still closed over here in California. Oh, wow. So yeah, like I said, like I'm doing what I can just here and just maintaining and just, again, to me, it's just no excuses, only solutions. And I'm still trying to just get my exercise in. Good for you. I appreciate that. Yeah, fortunately, we're in my gym right now. I can see the kettlebells and the maces and TRX. So yeah, I see those. <laughs> <I'm a quick. laughs> it looks good to me. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, I, I host, uh, <laughs> my wife works in a law firm in, in HR. And so I pitched the CEO. I'm like, why don't we do a group class through Zoom and I'll host it in our house and we'll use laundry detergent and our dogs for squats and you know, <laughs> make it entertaining. And <laughs> so, so you're actually you. like where it happens right here. Uh, That's awesome. Just, thank you. And again, you're just finding ways to adapt, right? Because you're right. Um, California's close. My, my good friend Matthew Flaherty is going to be here from New York City, and he's he hasn't had access to his own gym for six months. You know, yeah. it's it's it is what it is. Um, fortunately, in Denver, yeah, we brutal. are allowed to have like eight or ten people in our five thousand foot facility with masks mm -hmm. on, and our fourth wall is a garage door, so we can it's safe and I, you know, and actually I, I prefer training outside anyway, so we have an out, outside apparatus, so making the most of it. Um, it. But it did snow here this week, yeah. uh, which is pretty crazy. That's what I was going to say. I was like, is, is it cold over there? I mean, how's the weather over there? I like cold. So my, my observations on what cold is is probably way off for most people. <laughs> I, I enjoy winter camping and, and cold baths and stuff. But it got down to probably 30 in town. And, and where I was camping, it's probably 20. And we got um, inches of snow for sure in the mountains, which does help with the fires, which is very right. nice. Yeah. But now it's back to 70. So very pleasant. We, we have very moderate uh, weather here in Colorado. You, you guys would probably like it. There's no humidity. It's just moderate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
That's cool. Yeah. No, I remember when I was there in Boulder, uh, it was really nice. Like I, I liked like just it had the snow vibe, but it was still, it wasn't too cold and it was just beautiful right. out there. Yeah. We went in March too. So. Oh, the snowiest month. yeah. That's actually yeah. the snowiest month in Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. But yeah, gotcha. you've it. it's, it's, it's super moderate. It's very, it's like you get a Patagonia puffy and you're good to go. You don't need much else. You know, yeah. it's not like a humid cold, like Chicago or, you know, other places that sticks to your bone. Oof. Oh man. I don't know how people do that out there. <laughs> They just get harsh, <laughs> hardened people for sure. I dig it. Um, well, we're covering a lot of fun territory. Um, do you have a, you have a very big online presence. Do you have a, a Facebook group as well? Yeah, we, we have a Facebook group too, you know, like for fit pros, like it's absolutely hundred percent free, you know, and, and that's kind of just like, you know, our way of kind of giving back, you know, to others, you know, and just, um, you know, we give so much value in there too, man. Like I, I love going live in there, you know, I really, really do. Yeah. You know, just like literally popping my face in there, unpolished. If I just woke up in the morning, it doesn't matter. Whatever's on my mind. If I have a little like gem that I just read out of a book or listen to a podcast, I just share it in there. You know, it's just my way of kind of giving back to, you know, to the fitness industry. That's fun. I, I had not thought about going live in a Facebook group. I'm sure that's very rewarding to just go raw. Just bleh, do it. No, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Take some Q&A here and there, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to take a page out of that book and do that. That's really cool. <laughs> Well, awesome guys. Um, is there anything, I, I have a lot of notes over here, but taking learning from you guys, is there anything else you would like to dive down into? Try to think. I mean, I know we covered a lot today, like a lot of good gems, a lot of mindset stuff. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I just think that, you know, just for me, I always like to kind of leave people with just like certain messages and just, um, I, I love this acronym. I use this acronym with my students and this can apply for anybody going forward. And the, the acronym is OCS, right? So the O stands for um, ownership, take extreme ownership in what you're doing, you know, whether it's your, you being a coach, a leader, any type of business owner, you're always going to have to take extreme ownership, whether you fail, you make a mistake, always take ownership. Then the C stands for, you know, you're a creator. At the end of the day, you really are a creator. Don't be the, the producer, you know, uh, don't be that yet yeah, the consumer, sorry, be the creator of what you're doing. Create good programs, create a good experience, good customer uh, experiences for your clients and what you're doing. And then the S is for service, right? So serve out there, go out there and serve. That's what you're there for, you know, and create impact. That's, yeah, that's a billboard right there, man. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, I, I wish that people would uh, put that in a billboard. Something they can get empowered by that. That's really that'd be cool. cool. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. for sure. I, I can get behind that one hundred percent. And also, the ownership is very important uh, part. Yeah, it um, really is. Yeah, I'm sure you guys have listened to or read Jocko's book on that. Yeah, yeah, I, I read his uh, book, Extreme Ownership. Yeah, yeah, very yeah, cool. good book. Yeah, did yeah. right. Yeah, what a badass. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true it's, it's applicable not only to navy seals but to everybody else yeah definitely yeah. Oh, that's really good stuff um my mind's racing because you guys are just so fun and easy to talk with and um well i, I think we'll probably have to do a part two because i've got a lot of notes on what to ask you for next oh one last question for you sure. Eric. are those blue blocker glasses right there they are, Sean. Yeah, it's just, you know, being, being on the computer all day long, I have to protect my eyes. And then on the phone too, it's like, whew, you know, I'm, I'm trying to really protect my eyes in the future. But yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, we might as well make this a party, guys. Come on. Hey. Hey, okay, there's another life hack right there, guys. It really yeah. helps. You know, um, I actually had this guy, uh, Brad Kearns, on the podcast a few weeks ago. He's the co-writer of the Primo Blueprint and Primal Kitchen and stuff like that. And okay. so he turned me on to an application called Iris. So you've heard of like Flux or like your night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Iris is like that on steroids. It's nuts. Like I'm, I'm easing into it. There's like different modes. There's like coder mode where it turns like red and black. It, it's a bit aggressive, hmm. but for people looking to, per, you know, preserve their eyes and, and also circadian rhythm and sleep and, and stuff like that. Uh, it's, it's very helpful. It's 15 bucks. It's a, it's a good investment. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I kid you not. Like, I mean, I, there's times I, I'll get, I'll still get migraines just from staring at the computer for so long. And, you know, as soon as I put these on, it just calms it down and just, it prevents it. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it's like placebo or, or what, but I mean, I, I feel they work. <laughs> I feel they work too. If it's placebo, yeah. I will still do it because it's me right. too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> oh, I dig it. Well, on that tip, are there any more kind of, I don't say hacks, but best practices you guys have for your own, your own health? Yeah. I mean, I, I would say, I mean, 
what I do, Sean, is just like, this has been like really hard for me though, is like I'm incorporating a, a wind down routine. So I'm really, really good and like adamant about doing the morning routine, but it's like, for some reason, man, like it's just like winding down so hard, like just like a cutoff time, you know? So I've been working on it. So for your listeners, I really, really advocate that, you know, to really have like a, a cutoff time, whether that's like six o'clock, five o'clock, seven o'clock, and just be really diligent with it, you know, because the rest of the time you can be present with your significant other. And also I'm just a really big proponent in doing and like many type of like rewards for the day. Cause if you put in a good day, it's like, go have some fun. You know, it doesn't yeah. mean you have to like do something crazy, but just go have fun, go, go binge watch, you know, maybe a couple episodes on Netflix, you know, go out to a movie, um, just go out to dinner go get a drink, you know, crack open a beer, you know, who cares, you know, but just like reward yourself just for the day, you know, but I like a little wind down routine. I think that's a nice little hack, but for me, it's just been, it's just hard just to get into that habit, you know? Oh, I know as, as creators, I, I have, I've embraced this at home the last six months, but I've also found myself like, oh, I can write more. I can write another article. And my yeah. wife, shut up and go to bed. I'm like, no, no, no. It's a <laughs> yeah. Let me create yeah. out, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a, it's a not say a battle. It's an it's a opportunity. It is. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Now, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give the listeners another good nugget too. Um, have you read the book Compound Effect by Darren Hardy? Not yet. Nope. Okay. Great, great book. And it's just, um, it, he talks about just like how everything in life is just, you know, a compound effect. So um, for me, you know, what, what I've just really honed in and taught myself is just to always every single day, right? Just have the intention, set an intention, be aware of something and just execute it, take action on it, but always have the intention of getting 1% better, right? So physically, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. And just if you let that compound over days, weeks, months, and years, I mean, you're going to get so much wiser, so much better in all different areas of life. And it's just going to make you a better all overall person. That's great. That's very, very helpful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is, this is, it's a lot of great wisdom you guys are sharing with the listeners and viewers. Right on. Yeah. Thanks, man. It's been yeah. a great conversation. So well, I appreciate it very much. <laughs> and um, I'll have as many of these notes in the show notes as possible. Uh, this will be on YouTube and, and pod everywhere you can get a podcast. Do you guys, I, I've had so much trouble trying to put the podcast in right places. Like a listener would be like, why aren't you on Stitcher? I'm like, what is Stitcher? Mm. Oh, crap. Okay. <laughs> you got to find a way to integrate it. But uh, it's, it's fun. Again, yeah. new ways to serve people in their platform. Like uh, one of the lines I really liked was talk to people in their language so they can understand you, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. you're right. So, yeah, so, yeah. you know, to trying to apply that knowledge to serving the audience this way too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, this has been an absolute joy, guys. Thank you for being open about talking about how and why you create your businesses. I'm going to have more questions for round two um, about more business-centric because a lot of people are entrepreneurs and self-employed, and they have a lot to gain from what you just shared with them. And, um, yeah, thank you for your time, guys. I really appreciate this conversation. Yeah. Thank you again for having us, Sean. Honestly, this is great. Uh, I love all the questions, just the genuine conversation. And for you even, too, for your vulnerability and courage to share just everything that's happened in your life, too. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Sean. Appreciate it. I appreciate it, guys. Well, that was Eric and Chris Martinez. I'm going to have links below where to find out more about them and their services. And as always, listeners and viewers and fans of Engearment, much love to you and your families and take care.